It's More Money with leading economist Steve Moore. Stephen Moore is with us, economist. With more than 30 years experience as an economist and as a leading thinker of government on business, showing deep understanding of the shifts in the global economy. He's leading economist Steve Moore with More Money on Talk Radio 77 WABC. Now, here's your host, Steve Moore. Welcome back, folks. This is the More Money Show on WABC Talk Radio. We are live today on a Saturday afternoon. It's raining where I am. It's been kind of sticky, uh, but actually it was a pretty beautiful week. I was able to go to a, a really cool resort area called Deep Creek, Maryland, which is right on the Maryland, Pennsylvania, West Virginia border. Beautiful lakes and we had beautiful weather. We went out on the boats and we just had went. we did some uh uh, rafting on the on the rapids, which was really fun. Although we had a couple of bad accidents, but it was it was an exhilarating experience and uh, just unwound a little bit. I was supposed to be on vacation, but of course, all hell broke loose this week with all the economic news. And every time I turned on TV, I saw my good friend Scott Besant, uh, who is now one of the top advisors to Donald J. Trump with people like Larry Kudlow and myself and Art Laffer. And Scott, you may have seen, uh, was on the stage with Donald Trump this week. I think it was in North Carolina. I can never keep up with where Donald Trump is. He does so many of these rallies. But Scott Besson, uh, you are uh, becoming one of the top economic and financial gurus in the country. So thank you so much for joining. Always good. And like you said, it was a busy week. <laughs> it sure was. So let's first talk about was it was it uh, North Carolina where you were with Trump? Yep, it was uh, Asheville, North Carolina, up in the, up near the Blue Ridge Mountains. And I tell you, Western North Carolina is Trump country. And don't believe what you read in the media. North <laughs> Carolina is Trump country. Yeah, you know it's interesting because uh, North, people forget that North Carolina had been a pretty reliable red state for. The last 25 years or so, but actually Obama won North Carolina in uh, in uh, 20. What was it? 2008, I think it was. And, and then um, and then I think it switched back to the Republicans. But it's one of those states that's been pretty close in election. So it's a must win state for Trump. Uh, if he's going to win this election, he has to win North Carolina. How, how did what was the mood of the people you saw there? Oh, it, it, it was jubilant. There was there were maybe twice as many people outside the convention hall as inside. And uh, Steve, I'm happy to report Donald Trump has got his groove back. Yeah. Uh, you know, no one was more surprised than I was than when he called me up on stage, and you know, I did a, a just a little impromptu one minute speech. But what I really wish that I had said was, you know, folks. This man was shot a month ago, and now he's in front of you 30 yeah. days later. It's you know, amazing. He was at the RNC two days after being shot. Yeah. You know, it's, it's superhuman. It really is. You know, I mean, the fact is he doesn't slow down. I, I've traveled a bit with him in previous campaigns, not so much this year. I did one event with him, but, you know, you can't keep up with him. You know? And I'm 15 years younger than he is, and I'm not the one on the stage giving the speeches, and I'm not traveling – you know, I think last week he was in Montana. He was in Colorado. He was in North Carolina. You know, it's just an amazing thing, folks. This guy is. And look, I'm not saying this just because I'm a fan of his policies. I just I marvel at his energy level. Uh, and we used to have to, Scott, we used to have to rotate people on and off the plane with him because we we couldn't keep up with them. Yeah. And Steve, what we saw you know, with Biden and Harris's speech on Friday in month in Raleigh is that she can't keep up with him either. I mean, it's clear to <laughs> right. me that she she's an economic illiterate, right. and you know, you 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 and I, uh, Art Laffer, Larry Kudlow, Steve Forbes have all had you know multiple multi-hour conversations with Donald right. Trump, where you know he's gotten us on our heels talking about economic policy, and what we saw in Raleigh on Friday. Was you know she couldn't even read from a tr teleprompter. You know she kept calling it the uh, 
price gauging instead of gouging. Price gauging. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't, by the way, Scott, I don't even think she knows the difference between price gauging and price gouging. <laughs> no, no, look, Steve, you know, she, she's a fake. And, you know, I, I found it very interesting. You know, she gives this Soviet style central planning speech. And you know, we, we see what's happened o- over the past three and a half years with the Harris Biden policies. You know, it's big government, big spending, big regulation equal big inflation. And mm-hmm. you know, they told us what's coming. It's big taxes. But you know, it's, it's clear you know, she's just throwing things up against the wall, you know, making it up as she goes along. She tried to talk about tariffs. And, you know, she was describing them. And I'm not even sure she ever said the word tariff. And you know, it's clear that it, it was just words on a teleprompter. You know, I, I, I used to teach economic history at Yale, and I can tell you that's what an F student looks like. Mm-hmm. So uh, if you look at her agenda, you know, it's basically tax the rich, right? Tax the rich, take the money from the producers, the people who um, have been successful. Uh, and by the way, the t- as you know, Scott, the top 1% already pay almost half the income tax. So they're paying, uh, they're, they're, they're uh, carrying a huge uh, share of the load already. And then basically pass out favors. So, for example, I mean, we've been talking about the the price controls, and I think most, almost every American knows these are really bad ideas. But then, what do you make of this idea that she wants to give twenty thousand dollars to new home buyers? Uh, well, first of all, it's twenty five thousand dollars. Twenty five thousand. <laughs> twenty five thousand. Yeah. Twenty five. And, and you know, like, why not fifty? Why? why yeah. Why not just buy in the house? Is you know, even. The Washington Post and CNN came out and criticized her for that. Yeah. You know, they both said, it, you know, even the Washington Post knows it, it'll just make house prices go up. And the only people it helps are the sellers, it's the people who already have houses. And you know, we, in, three and a, in three and a half years, um, they, they built eight charging stations. Why should we think they could <laughs> yeah, build exactly. three million – Three million houses, and you know, give people twenty five thousand know, dollars. So it, Scott, it, yeah, it's it just—I mean, it, they're just spending money like it's candy, and it's—it's it's just graft. It's trying to buy votes. They say, you know, they want another half trillion dollars. I don't know if you saw, they want another half trillion dollars of student loan forgiveness. Yeah, and Steve, I—I I think the the biggest difference between Harris slash Biden and Donald Trump. Donald Trump wants government to do what it's supposed to do. Right. It's supposed to set. It's supposed to set boundaries. It's supposed to protect the border. It's right. supposed to keep people safe, and it's supposed to create an environment where people can prosper. Right. Uh, this this seventy style experiment that she wants to go through again, you know, mm-hmm. it, it's failed. And uh, I think there are enough people like you and I who are around long enough to remember that it's a failure and everyone's seen that the past three and a half years have been a failure. And you know, one, one thing I would say to your listeners, what's driving me crazy about Kamala Harris is when she says, well, on day one, I'm going to do this. Well, Steve, this is day 1,305 <laughs> no, right. yeah. of the Harris Biden administration. Yeah. And she she, you know, did you see the column, the comment by Susan Rice? Of course, she's one of the a lot of people say she's been kind of running the White House for the last four years. And Susan Rice said quote, something. I think this is an exact quote that she was an integral part of every decision we've made. Yeah, of course she was. And, you know, Biden also said yesterday she's not dissing herself from my policy. And Steve, of course, that she was an integral part. Because as we now have seen that Joe Biden wasn't able to run anything, we don't know whether it's for the past months or years. So we have to assume that you know, Kamala Harris was in charge. Yeah. But again, so it's back to this idea that she's a fake. You know, she yeah. faked being on Joe Biden's side until, you know, it became expedient and they, they did the, you know, mini coup and then she took over it, it is i i think the washington post and cnn are so upset with friday's speech because they all expect 
her to yeah. fake it and move to the middle. Right. And then, you know, she's, she's hard left. But if she actually says what she believes, like she did with these, the, you know, Medora style programs, then you know, she's going to, she's going to get slaughtered in November. Yeah. Well, look, uh, Scott, if you think she's done a great job at the border, you know, controlling the border because she was the border czar. <laughs> Although she's denying that now too. But obviously, she her first job as vice president was she was put in charge of the border, which I don't think she ever actually went right to the border. Um, but if you think she did a great job at the border, then you probably think her inflation <laughs> reduction plan will work. Scott, a lot of our listeners listen to this show because they follow the stock market. They follow what's going on with their investments. We had a really good week with the stock market this week, way up in terms of valuations. What do you, what do you see? What's going on with the stock market right now? Yeah, I, I, I think it's a bit schizophrenic right now. You know, we're, we're still down about 2% from the peak in July. Yeah which yep. also cor- corresponded with President Trump's the uh, peak uh, popularity. Uh, you know, we, we had the, the, the quick sell-off. And I, I think you know, we're injecting some uncertainty here. Yeah. Um, you know, Steve, you and I are old enough to remember that in 1992, you know, James Carville had the saying, it's the economy, stupid. Yep. The, the mainstream media... I kept saying, oh, the economy's terrible, the economy's terrible. And then Bill Clinton beat George H.W. Bush. And then somehow, mm-hmm. miraculously, on November 15th, after Clinton won, the economy turned turned great. Mm-hmm. I, I think what we're getting now is a bit of gaslighting on the economy. We've had four straight months of rising unemployment, uh, industrial production's down. Way down the numbers yeah. are very noisy. And I predict that if somehow Kamala Harris wins the, uh, on November 5th, on November 15th, they, they're going to be saying, oh, my God, the economy is terrible. Because, look, as you know, this economy is being supported just by government spending. 60 to 65 percent of all the jobs that uh, Harris has created are government jobs. Yeah. Private yeah. sector is getting squeezed. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Steve, I, I know it's something that you and Steve Forbes focus on is the price of gold. And you know, I, I don't think it was a coincidence that gold hit a new high, all-time high on Friday, when Kamala Harris gave her speech on the yeah. big giveaways. Yeah. I, I, I think that, you know, this was this is kind of my sense of the political situation, Scott, and I'd love your reaction. Um, you know, Kamala had an amazing... Um, honeymoon period that lasted about two or three weeks where, you know, she could do no wrong and the media treated her like she was Mother Teresa. And they really, there was a, a, you know, it was a concentrated media uh, extravaganza to, to lift her up. And it did lift her up. In fact, she, she was, you know, the Democrats were down eight, 10 points and the, and they tied Kamala is now basically in a tie with Trump. And, but this week, Kamala actually had to come out with policy proposals. And this was a big, big, big blunder by Kamala Harris. She's basically saying to the American people, I'm not a moderate. I'm not a centrist. I'm not pretending like I'm a Bill Clinton Democrat. I am a radical leftist who believes the government is going to solve all our problem. We're going to spend more. We're going to tax more. We're going to regulate more. We're going to tell businesses what they can charge for their product. And I got to tell you, even some of my friends who are, you know, more on the moderate side of the, you know, who, who kind of switch back between Republican and Democrat, their jaws drop, Scott. They're like, what? <laughs> she wants. So I, I'm just shocked that they made such a political blunder. So blunderous. I don't know if she can recover from this. Well, you know, Steve, she's not a serious person, but again, I just keep coming back to, you know, she's a, she's a cheap fake or a deep fake, whatever you want to call it. You know, she tried to be, you know, for San Francisco, you know, San Francisco version of tough on crime when she was a prosecutor there. And then summer of 2020, they, you know, she's um, supporting all the writers in Minneapolis. Yeah, right. Uh, and by they, the way, and, uh, by the way, Scott, we just had on Heather McDonald and she said the same thing about Tim Walsh. He was basically giving a free pass. These people were burning down the city of Minneapolis. Oh, well, and, and look, 
think neither one of them in their adult lives has had a job in the private right. sector. Every check they've gotten is from the government, and including yep. Governor Waltz getting some from the Chinese government. Yeah. So, um, but I, I think that you know what we saw in 2020 was Scranton Joe Biden was yep. able to convince the American people that he was moderate, yep. and he went hard left. Kamala Harris is hard left. And you know, she can't keep the mask on. She can't tack to the center. You know, she tried. And the American people, you know, I, I was in, in my car the other morning, and the Who song, Won't Be Fooled Again, was playing. And the American people are not going to be fooled again. And yeah. you know, <laughs> We won't be again. fooled again. Just like the Who yeah. song, right? We won't be fooled again. And I, I think you're right. I think a lot of people who, you know, there's probably, you know, 20% of the voters who are in the undecided column. And I think a lot of them are kind of aghast that Kamala does. I mean, can you name one thing, Scott? We only got a minute and a half left. Can you imagine, name one thing she has pro- she's proposed that is pro growth? Uh, the, the only the only growth that she's proposed is government debt. Discover. <laughs> exactly, Scott Bessett. You are the best. Uh, Scott is the CEO of Key Square. He is a top economic advisor to Donald Trump. I hope he is the next Treasury Secretary when Donald Trump wins, and I believe Donald Trump will win the election. Folks, we will be right back. Uh, this is the More Money Show, and we have one more segment with two of the very best in the business in terms of financial advice, Bob and Ryan Payne, who've been sponsoring this show for so long. Love those guys, and. Uh, I hope you all have a wonderful weekend in the meantime.